Picture this, it's the early 20th century, and the world is engulfed in the flames of World War I. Imagine cobbled streets of Europe echoing with the distant boom of artillery, while across the Atlantic, bustling American factories hum with the fervor of wartime production. Amidst the chaos, there arose a group of unsung heroes, the Yeomanettes, or Yeoman F. Their story, often overlooked in the pages of history, is a testament to the courage and resilience of women during one of the world's most tumultuous times. As the world plunged into global warfare, women across the country found themselves thrust into new roles and responsibilities. They took up jobs traditionally held by men, keeping the wheels of industry turning while their husbands, brothers, and sons marched off to the front lines. World War I shattered traditional gender roles as women stepped up to fill the void, especially from the pool of women who not just stepped up, but rose higher above their stations to work in the Navy. This International Women's Month, let's remember the trailblazing Yeomanettes, the first women to serve officially in the U.S. Navy. We honor their courage and contribution by sharing their stories and recognizing their lasting impact on paving the way for future generations of women not just in the military, but all throughout our American history. Hello and welcome to History of Life, where we relive history's greatest moments and the eras in between. Today we're going to discover what life was like during the World War I era for the Yeomanettes, the valiant women who were America's first naval service members. If you'd like to see more fascinating facts, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. We love having you around so thanks for checking us out. Towards the mid-1910s, there was an evident shift in society that women were taking on bigger roles than being just housewives and mothers. What started off as merely filling in the gap left by the men who joined the war soon became one of the most progressive leaps forward for the United States government and military. Among these pioneering women breaking free from gender-based boundaries were the Yeomanettes, a group of brave souls who served in the U.S. Navy during World War I. Their story is a fascinating blend of patriotism, determination, and a desire to break barriers in a male-dominated world. As we delve into the origins of these brave and era-defining women, we'll also explore what life was like for them during their naval service during World War I. Likewise, we'll highlight their contributions to the war effort and discuss the legacy they left behind for generations of women who are now free to go after the career and the life of their dreams. In the midst of World War I, the United States found itself in need of additional manpower to support its military efforts. While there were many male volunteers, the vast majority of men who served in the U.S. Army entered through the draft. The Selective Service Act authorized a massive expansion of the military, with 2.8 million men inducted into the U.S. Army during World War I, alongside an additional 2 million male volunteers. In total, that's about 4.8 million male service members but this figure was still not enough to meet their target. In response to this demand, Congress passed the Naval Act of 1916, which authorized the enlistment of women into the U.S. Navy for the first time in history. The Secretary of the Navy at that time, Josephus Daniels, had proposed that women be permitted to enlist as yeomen, the Navy's term for a petty officer who mainly performs clerical and administrative duties. Daniels realized that there was a loophole in naval regulations when he saw no explicit clause that specified a yeoman had to be male. As expected, his proposal was met with some violent reaction and backlash, wherein top brass were concerned that women would disrupt established order and decorum on ships, and that they might be too weak to deal with the daily rigors of military life. But with the manpower shortage looming over them, the U.S. Navy finally gave in and accepted women to apply to become yeomen wherein they were officially categorized as Yeoman F within the organization's structure. With the passage of the Naval Act, the Navy began actively recruiting women to serve in non-combat roles. These roles primarily focused on administrative and clerical duties, such as typing, filing, and record keeping. They also worked as translators, while the more skillful ones deciphered Morse code. Some also became telephone and radio operators and telegraphers, and while there was already an existing and separate auxiliary Navy nurse corps at the time, some yeomanettes worked in hospitals and labs to be pharmacists. Women from all walks of life answered the call to serve their country, eager to contribute in any way they could. For many women, the opportunity to serve in the Navy was a chance to break free from traditional gender roles and make a meaningful impact on the war effort. Once enlisted, Yeomanettes underwent rigorous training to prepare them for their roles within the Navy. 
Loretta Perfectus Walsh of Philadelphia was the very first woman to enlist as a Yeoman F for the U.S. Navy on March 17, 1917. Just a few days after enlisting, she was promoted as Chief Petty Officer, becoming the first female to have ever risen to the ranks in the Navy's history. In over a month since Loretta enlisted, approximately 600 women signed up to be a Yeomanette. They received instruction in military protocol, clerical tasks, and other essential skills needed to perform their duties effectively. Yeomanettes approached their training with determination and a sense of duty to their country. They wore a distinctive uniform that set them apart from the male yeomans, consisting of a dark blue skirt, jacket, and a hat adorned with a white collar and cuffs. Living conditions varied depending on location, with some yeomanettes stationed in bustling cities while others served in more remote areas. Despite the differences, each yeomanette shared a commitment to their duties and a sense of pride in their service to their country. Life as a yeomanette was not without its hardships. They faced heavy social pressure and skepticism from their male counterparts within the organization. Some dissidents even voiced out their fears that professionalism and discipline within the ranks would be compromised as women were now serving alongside men. However, the yeomanettes remained undeterred, determined to prove themselves in a male-dominated institution. Being a yeomanette, though, was also filled with moments of camaraderie and pride, from long hours spent typing reports to bonding with fellow servicewomen over shared experiences, Yeomanettes forged lasting friendships and memories that would stay with them long after the war ended. How's your viewing experience so far? Learning all about these fascinating facts about what life was like in World War I for these brave Yeomanettes. Is there anything about them that really stood out for you? We hope you can stick around and continue viewing as we'll go even deeper into the lives of these fantastic females who gave the highest service to our country. If you're enjoying this video, we hope you can hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so we can share more captivating history tidbits to you. Yeomanettes played a crucial role in supporting the war effort on the home front. They were responsible for a wide range of administrative and clerical tasks, including managing personnel records, processing mail, and coordinating communications between naval units. Their meticulous attention to detail and organizational skills were essential in ensuring the smooth operation of naval offices and facilities. Many Yeomanettes brought valuable skills and expertise to their roles in the Navy, having previously worked in fields such as secretarial work, accounting, and stenography. Their proficiency in these areas allowed them to excel in their duties and contribute significantly to the overall efficiency of naval operations. In 1917, the science of fingerprinting was being newly developed at that time, so the Yeomanettes were also employed in taking and reading fingerprints for the Navy's records. Apart from office work, a number of the early enlisters also worked as Navy recruiters. Likewise, they were often tasked to march in ceremonial parades for the military, as well as participating in Liberty Loan bond drives. By assuming administrative and clerical duties previously performed by men, Yeomanettes played a vital role in freeing up manpower for frontline combat roles. This redistribution of resources allowed the Navy to maximize its combat effectiveness and ensure that essential tasks were carried out without interruption from processing enlistment paperwork for new recruits to compiling intelligence reports and logistical data. Yeomanettes made invaluable contributions to every aspect of naval operations during World War I. Their dedication and hard work behind the scenes helped to support and sustain the men on the front lines, ultimately contributing to victory for the United States and the Allies in the war. Among the ranks of the Yeomanettes were women whose contributions and achievements stood out, shaping the course of history and paving the way for future generations of women in the military. These iconic figures embody the spirit of courage, resilience, and determination that defined the Yeomanettes program. At its peak, the Yeomanettes program enlisted over 11,000 women during World War I, coming from almost every state and territory. If it weren't for the foresight of Secretary of the Navy, Josephus Daniels, women wouldn't even have been allowed to reach their fullest potential that time. While we acknowledge that Daniels was progressive in opening up the Navy to women, we cannot overlook that his views on racial equality were rather prejudiced. Opportunities for African-American men to work in the Navy in World War I were very limited. Sadly, Daniels wasn't open to let African-American women enlist in the Yeoman F program, but somehow, there were 14 African-American women who managed to work as Yeomanettes in the Navy's muster roll office in Washington, D.C. 
One of these pioneering African-American yeomanettes was Sarah Davis Taylor, who'd go on to have a 23-year career as a Navy Department clerk. Other notable yeomanettes include Joy Bright Hancock, who served the U.S. Navy for over three decades, being one of the first women to hold a regular commission in the Navy and heavily advocated for the integration of women into the service. Elizabeth Reynard, who held the distinction of being the first woman commissioned as a lieutenant in the U.S. Navy Reserve, and Daisy May Pratt Eard, the chief yeoman in charge of enlisted women stationed at the Boston Navy Yard, who created the Hingham Naval Training Station Band for the recreation of recruits with musical skills. After the war ended, many yeomanettes continued to serve their country in various capacities, while others pursued careers and higher education opportunities made possible by their military service. Their experiences as yeomanettes shaped their views on women's rights and equality, leading many to become advocates for social and political change. Speaking of political change, one of the better outcomes of the Yeoman F program was that it showed society just how important women were, beyond being mere homemakers. Just two years after the war ended on Armistice Day on November 11, 1918, the United States Congress introduced the 19th Amendment in 1920. This finally broke the ground for women to be given the right to vote, albeit women of color had to wait five more decades before they could access this right. More opportunities opened up for women because they had proven to the nation that they could serve in the same capacity equal to men. Along with their male counterparts, the Yeomanettes were put on the military rolls as inactive for the remainder of their four-year enlistment term, and they received partial pay at the time of their departure. As their four-year term came up, they were discharged, receiving full veteran benefits the same as the men. Majority of the Yeomanettes returned to their regular routines after the war, but there were those who chose to remain in the Navy. Many of them became active with veterans groups, even becoming the founders of several American Legion posts. In 2007, Charlotte Louise Winters, the last surviving Yeomanette, passed away, ending the line of these determined women who served in World War I. Throughout this journey into the lives of the Yeomanettes, we've uncovered a rich tapestry of history, courage, and resilience, from their humble beginnings as pioneers in the U.S. Navy to their lasting impact on women's rights and equality. The story of the Yeomanettes is one that deserves to be remembered and celebrated. In the midst of a global conflict that reshaped the course of history, the Yeomanettes stood as beacons of hope and inspiration, proving that women were more than capable of serving their country in times of need. Their dedication and sacrifice helped to ensure the success of the Allied powers and paved the way for more women serving in the military later on. As we reflect on the legacy of the Yeomanettes, let us not forget the countless women who bravely stepped forward to serve their country during World War I, especially as we celebrate International Women's Month this March. May their courage, resilience, and pioneering spirit continue to inspire us today, reminding us of the power of determination and the importance of standing up for what is right. As we look back on the story of the Yeomanettes, let us ask ourselves what other untold stories of courage and resilience lie waiting to be discovered in the pages of history. And perhaps more importantly, what can we learn from these stories to shape a better future for generations to come? Thank you for watching History of Life. We hope you thoroughly enjoyed and are inspired by this video exploring what life was like in World War I for the Yeomanettes. By the way, here at History of Life, we're always striving for perfection. Have any feedback on how we can improve? Do let us know in the comments section. And while you're at it, we'd love to hear any stories about anyone in your family who served during the war. Like this video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to know when the next one comes out. See you in the next video.